Okay, as promised, I'm going to go over the details of the glass shelf effect. I'm going to just go ahead and start by adding it to my clip. And aside from the on screen controls here, they don't appear when the uh, movie is rendered or when, they're, when it's playing. They appear when the clip is selected and the filter is selected. So if I click on a different filter, they disappear. So to reactivate the on-screen controls, make sure that the effect is selected. This effect has quite a lot of parameters. And it might look intimidating at first, but a lot of these are repetitions of sections for various aspects. Let me go ahead and start moving this around. Uh, the first thing we have here is the camera center. That is associated with this control right here. Uh, it can be a little jerky at times, but I mean it'll pull around. The parameters here are decimal numbers. Okay, they're not pixels. And uh, this is just the way on screen controls work in motion and um, how they are applied for Final Cut. So most of the time when you're dealing with this, you will be using the on-screen control to move the position because you won't have exact pixel locations for this. And this parameter is basically here for keyframing key and dragging the on-screen control around. Uh, there are two parameters here that affect the view distance, there is a view, lens view angle and a camera distance. They have slightly different effects. And they can be worked in tandem like this to create a, a little bit more stretching distortion. can see how a low view angle and a high camera distance makes a more square image and vice versa would be a more stretched out image, a short camera distance and a long lens angle. And these can also be keyframed to create a perspective difference as it animates through. You can change the camera orientation. It does not have an on-screen control, but you can sort of sweep around the edges a little bit. And that creates an interesting effect. So just under that, the width, depth, and height controls affect the surface areas where reflections occur and I will need to change the color from black in order to demonstrate that. So I have a floor color down here, I have a back wall color, I'll get to these in a little bit. And you can decrease the width to just about the size of the video, like so, and increase it to fill a great deal of the distance in the background, and adjust the camera angle and the view angle to 
block those edges. Let me move this back. Camera view like so. And the width back into normal range, which is about 25%. 25 is going to be normal for all of these. And stretch out the depth of the scene or shrink it down. You can increase the height. You can move the video in the scene forward and back. These rotational controls right here are have on-screen controls. This first one is left and right or the Y rotation. It is probably the most useful control. The second one will be the roll or the X orientation. And the last one will be pitch or the Z orientation. Set. Everything from floor color down to the end has to do with the reflective surfaces. Uh, the default opacity of all of these is 50%. And I'm going to start showing you this effect over another clip. So I'm going to hold down the Option key and drag this over onto Overlay on another clip. You can increase the opacity to 100%. You can turn on and off the reflections for each surface. And the number of reflections you have will determine how long it will take the clip to render. So uh, there is another checkbox down here to show the sidewalls. And when they are in play, let me select this. then the controls will tend to be a little sluggish. So while you're developing your animation, it's best to keep your sidewalls turned off. You can see how easy that is. And then at the end, turn on your sidewalls and adjust their parameters. So we have for each surface, we have an opacity, we have the reflection, we have the amount of reflectivity. You can blur. Let me get closer in here. Okay. You can blur the reflection. You can control the fall off. Zero is um, a a mirror-like reflection. And you can trim the distance for the fall off with this control, like so. Anyway, there it is sure you can do a lot more with it. This was just a run through of the features. It's not as complicated as it looks. I hope you can put it to use. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.